So for people that uh, joined a little bit later in the call, it's best to, to mute yourself uh, to avoid uh, background noises. And I propose to save bandwidth that we only uh, give the camera to the speaker, which will be in the first couple of minutes uh, myself. So uh, welcome, as I said before, um, in the sake of time, because we, are, we, we have a good lined up uh, program, uh, I propose we start. You can ask questions uh, during this event whenever you want uh, via the chat box. Uh, and that's what you see normally on your left side, uh, the little chat box. As I say, stay muted. Also, when you want to um, uh, in the Q&A part for later on in the, in, in the call, when you would like to ask a question uh, verbally, just wave your hand and Igor, who's next to me, uh, he will um, uh, he will allow you to uh, uh, to come up with the question. Um, stay tuned as we are going to do some polls during this session. Um, and I think to make uh, to 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 practice a little bit on it, let's try the first uh, poll, and you will see that in the chat window. You see it already. So if you would like to vote. Uh, will the temperature outside exceed 25 degrees today, yes or no? Voila. Okay. So 17 people have already found the way how to, to vote. So to keep it a bit interactive, we will use during the session uh, sometimes the, the, the poll as well. Now, as uh, we have mentioned in our confirmation to you, during this event, um, three participants uh, have the chance to win a family breakfast basket delivered tomorrow morning to their home. Uh, now, to keep that practical, of course, we need to have from the winners the uh, private email address, the mobile phone number, the number of people at your breakfast table tomorrow morning. And so please don't invite the whole, uh, the whole neighborhood although it's only limited to 10 people anyway, right? Um, and also maybe the, 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 uh, the number of children younger than 10 years so that we can adapt a little bit the, uh, the basket to it. So um, to, to, to get this down, let's try to, to, to find the first winner of the basket. So then we know that this is working as well, Igor. So the wheel is going to run. And Stefan Steers is the one that is the first one that wins a uh, breakfast basket. Is Stefan Steers in the call? Because that's one of the, otherwise we need to take another one. Stefan, are you in the call? Can you wave your hand? Stefan is not in a call, that's a pity. <laughs> that means I have a chance for somebody else. Dieter van Uffel, is Dieter van Uffel in the call? Yes, I am. Okay, so Dieter, if you um, can send me your the data I just uh, asked, so your yes. private address yeah. and so on and so on, um, then we will want to take care of it. So stay tuned. During the session, we will uh, do this uh, two more times, so two more people have the chance to win a, a breakfast for tomorrow morning. With that, I would like to hand over to um, um, Bart van Rentergem, who's uh, the X Plus CEO, um, and who is going to do the, let's say, the to to position uh, the breakfast session, the content, and also introduce our guest speaker of today. I hand over to uh, Bart. Bart, up to you. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see uh, all those people in the call and that we are so many. Um, my goal is, uh, so I'm Bart van Rentigem. I'm indeed a partner of uh, Delivery Transformation Services at, at X Plus. 
And my goal is just to give a, a short, short introduction before announcing our um, prominent guest, uh, Mark van der Perre uh, of uh, the Colored uh, Group, uh, which is the main presentation of, uh, of today, of course. So in, in my short introduction, uh, the topic of today is, of course, business architecture. I want to uh, um, uh, ask yourself a question. Uh, um, I, we all know, I think, business architecture has been uh, around for a long, long time. And um, in fact, I will not talk a lot of Express. Uh, that's not why we are here. Um, so um, why only now is indeed the question. If you look at the Google Trends, uh, in Google Trends, you, 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 you see when was the peak, the highest uh, search rate uh, on, on, on business architecture. It was already in, in 2005, in fact. <laughs> So, and also the most prominent books on business architecture date around that uh, same era, uh, uh, 2006, uh, the book on an enterprise uh, architecture as a strategy. We, um, we know the quadrants uh, on, on, on how to look at an, an operating model. Uh, will we centralize uh, things? Will we decentralize? And what are the main reasons? Uh, will we go for business? process standardization, uh, how many integrations do we need in, in the organization and what are the, the pros and cons. All those concepts were really thought of and, and, and written in, in, in 2005. So my story is indeed uh, why um, it took so long because we see only now that um, our customers and also in the market is really investing in, in, in business architecture and it's been a, around a long time. So let's dive into the story, I would say. Um, it's from a personal point of view. It's also from uh, a lot of uh, partners and, and, and consultants and Explus. Uh, some 50 years ago, um, the world was different. Uh, um, we started doing a kind of, uh, we got the question in fact from mostly from the IT department and uh, because they needed a, a, a kind of roadmap. Uh, and why was that? Of course, IT, heavy investments, you need to look at the longer term, uh, three to five years, uh, and you need to have uh, a, pre a kind of predictability. So we started doing exercises on the IT part and we came with questions to the business, of course. Um, would it be a good idea eh, to have a kind of transactional uh, website? Would it be a good idea? What do you think of the system? Uh, is a system enough uh, for you? So the question is, yeah, do we work still this way uh, today? And um, of course, I think this is a rhetorical question. Um, I skip the uh, examples. They are in the slides. You can will you you will receive the slides. You can uh, you can 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 take a look. Uh, but of course, we are not working today anymore like that. And it was not at the time that we don't wanted to describe the business um, uh, impact or the value that would bring to the business having a website, an app, uh, a 360 view, uh, a CRM system and so. But in fact, it, um, it was, we think, become, because we came with questions where the answer was difficult for most organizations. And, and why was that? Because they were really lacking a capability inside the organization to make the transformation or the transition between having an, a strategic objective and um, getting to that execution and making the impact clear of that, uh, that objective and making the impact clear on what that could change in the organization, what that could change for the, the customer and what value would that bring. And 15 years, we didn't see that capability. And that was why it was so difficult to have an answer to that question, in fact. If you look at today, yeah, if you really look at today, organizations really have changed a lot. They're putting the value, uh, most organizations put value for the customer first eh, before they think about what uh, would, would we like to do. They put really the picture, uh, customer in the picture and um, where the, that approach of 15 years ago, that was really too much application at IT capability center, uh, centered. So we're moving in a faster pace now. Eh? Uh, companies thinking outside in, technical evolutions, which is also uh, a business changer in, in many ways. Eh? creates also new business opportunities. 
those value-based processes start to emerge. Uh, things like techniques, like um, customer journeys, and and so on. Uh, people are really used thinking and and uh, uh, about change and customer in in that way. And it's clear that business space is 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 uh, going faster and faster we uh, have contact with. So I will skip this. All, these are all techniques how you can work value based and uh, like um, this is one. Uh, this is also another one. Um, but indeed increasing uh, capabilities of making that impact clear and then a rise of course the need of business architecture which is really what is business ar architecture about and building a structure building um, uh, an overview of where the impact lies important to mention is also you don't you you have to do that in in in, in two layers and uh, you have to do in two um, different um, 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 uh, uh, visions. Uh, one is a strategic level vision, uh, which where we will want to stand for three to five years. Why is that important? Of course, if you want to introduce new capabilities in your organization, you can't do that in, in one or two years. Uh, um, you have to grow that capability and growing takes time, but you need a strategic plan for that. But also you don't you have to support your projects you have to support and making sure that they are moving in the right direction so that's why most companies uh, do that in two um, in two uh, ways in fact we will discuss next breakfast session which is really interesting how to combine those two and and how to combine those two uh, also in an agile oriented organization and uh, which is really a stretch for most architecture departments um, as X plus, um, we see really indeed, like I said, it, uh, evolve the market, evolve the maturity in, in most companies um, on, on, on business architecture, really building that capability and, and also taking a lot of different approaches to it, which is totally fine and, 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 and okay because every business is different, right? So there is really a lot of happening on the market as we speak. Um, my last uh, slide since in fact is to give a visibility on, on how, how you can do that business architecture, how we, we approach uh, business architecture. And like I said, there is a strategy, le a strategy level yeah, uh, where you can define. So what is the reason of existence of the company? Of course, what is the business model? And we all know a business model, right? Yeah? What are the activities or what is the value we want to bring to the market? Who are our key suppliers? What are the, the, our target? What is our revenue model? So that's a classical uh, business uh, model description. Yeah? And also an operating model. An operating model is, in fact, like um, the, like you saw in the in the first slides, uh, like um, the discussion with uh, with Ross. Uh, how, what what will we um, bring to, together in the company? Um, like, will we have a shared service center for factoring, for instance, or how will we? Um, um, uh, uh, describe or uh, implement our sales and operational planning in the organization. Are are we having going? Are we going for toll manufacturing or contract manufacturing? Do we put um, our research and development centers as competitors to each other or not? Uh, uh, will we have a shared service center for IT? Those important questions are really driving um, a lot of um, uh, the the rest of the business architecture, of course, as you can imagine. And what are they driving? In fact, they are driving the, which capabilities we should have in that organization and how we will organize that capability. Because you can apply, of course, the operating model for every capability in an organization. So a capability is like a, a business function um, you, you need to have to indeed bring that value to the customer. Yeah. Like marketing, we need marketing, we need uh, product development, we need and that these, these are all capabilities and um, as an architect, we like to structure those capabilities in like a, a company on a page, yeah, which is really an overview of capability models and where we can uh, can uh, see what is lacking, uh, what capability do we lack or where we do, do need to improve. Yeah. 
Next level of detail in business architecture is describing the, the operating model in, in, in detail, in fact, and, and that's uh, our classical uh, like uh, people, process and tools. And so um, what is the organization? Who, who is responsible for what? Um, what is the what, who, what? Where are the business processes? Um, uh, what is the information we need to to make the that that happen to bring that value? And of course, what are the the, the tools or what part of the process do we need to automate to make that um, that value feasible? So that are the deliverables on uh, operating model. Next is indeed you need to measure it. And as we all know, this is really important um, as <laughs> the way you measure can indeed change the process. Uh, so um, finding out which are the key uh, success factors and the key uh, the KPIs um, to um, to measure all this in order indeed to continuous improve. Uh, um, a mature organization will, will strive to have those measures, to have the data, to continuous improve the, the processes. And then that's why we need indeed every business, a good our business architecture defines also a performance model. And last but not least, of course, you need the governance in the organization to make the, those key decisions work for you. And last but not least, uh, um, that brings you I think these are the things that really describe the impact of a change you would like to do in an organization and brings you from strategy to execution. So that's all what I, I, I liked the, to, to bring as an introduction uh, for, for Mark. Um, so the key, uh, the key takeaways are indeed that um, it's been there for a long time. We as, X, as X Plus um, doing that also for a long time. Uh, we have a, a course on that in academy even um, uh, services, but key takeaway is it's only now that we see that uh, that capability becoming more and more important in most companies on the market. And why is that? Because business is really uh, fasting, um, getting faster and faster, and you need that capability really to have in the organization to uh, make that impact clear and make sure you don't forget anything. So, Ludo, that um, concludes my my presentation. Um, one thing, indeed, we're not there. There's still uh, some challenges, and one of those challenges, in fact, to combine that agile uh, mentality, agile organization. We want to move ahead fast with um, good thinking and a strategy thinking, and uh, on, on those two levels. And uh, yeah, I think it's an, a very important uh, subject, not only for business architecture but for architects in um, in general. Um, to have a discussion on uh, that because that's a real challenge as well. So okay, thanks, thank Bart. you all. So thanks, Bart. Um, before we hand over to uh, Mark van der Perre, um, we're going to do one more poll, and um, I see that some people have issues by uh, having access to the to the poll tool for whatever reason. Uh, could be firewall, but um, okay. Um, Igor, can you launch the next question? It's there. So you can answer whenever you want. Okay. And then we're going to do the second uh, breakfast session after Dieter. Yes. So Anne Swalus, I've seen that she is in the call. So Anne, if you're still there. Yes, yes, I am. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so if you can send me um, and my email address, I will I will put it in the chat box. Uh, I presented earlier as well. Um, your private address, your mobile phone number, because that would be um, uh, Interesting if we need to reach you tomorrow morning. Uh, the number of people and eventually the number of children younger than 10 years. If you can put uh, that in an email to me, that would be uh, that would be great. Okay, okay. Good. So yes, thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations again. And with that, Thanks. I hand 
I hand over to uh, Mark van der Perre. Mark, you have been waiting for nearly half an hour now, so uh, I think you're up to steam to uh, uh, to bring a fantastic story. Please. Okay. Thank you. Do everyone see the screen? Yes. Okay. So then I can start. I, I'm Mark van der Perre. I'm responsible at Colored Group for Enterprise Business Architecture. We will see further in the presentation where this is positioned. The goal of this presentation is not to explain how we do architecture at Colored Group, but a little bit about the history and the reason we do enterprise business architecture at uh, Colored Group. So I will introduce a little bit in the context of Colored Group, not a commercial st story, but the reason where we make the link then with business architecture. I give you some uh, history of enterprise business architecture, some basic concepts of bu enterprise business architecture. We learn also the business, uh, the importance of the layers of enterprise business architecture, the place in the organization, and some takeaways as key su success factors. Colored Group uh, is evolving from a family business to a family of businesses. In the beginning, we had our brand Colored Lowest Prices, who went to the market. In the coming years, we acquired or started up new businesses. And then, at a certain moment in time, Colored Lowest Prices shifted to its place like the other brands, and Colored Group was created. At that moment in time, uh, a lot of shared service centers were still provided by Colored uh, Lowest Prices, were shifted to shared service centers on Colored Group level. Why we find a family of business important? We believe that uh, by being connected, we, we are a family, so we have uh, solidarity in the family, we are value driven. And we believe very strongly that doing things together is better than and more efficient than doing it alone. But we want to be unique in the market, so we don't have one only one brand in the market, but we have different brands with, with better response to the needs of the customer. So you have not one size fits all to the customer. We have different brands, but internally we look for opportunities and shared. And that's also the reason and the importance of of a business architecture to look at the synergies in the group. When you see also, this is a model of Deloitte, we, we borrowed. When you see uh, the positioning of the structure of companies, you can go on the totally left, left side, more you have the holding, where there's more only a functional controlling part on your business units. And you can go to the totally other side, where from corporate level you take the full control and in fact you don't have any business units anymore. Colorado is more in the strategic control level where you see eh, the, the corporate gives assignment to the operating units who execute the core functions, but the important staff functions are steered by corporates and work, worked in matrix for the operating units. And this is the, the model where we work in Colorado's group. So as enterprise business architecture, we are positioned in the corporate and work in matrix for operating units. You see, you see also the evolution of the group. Eh? We have we have grow internally by acquisitions and starting up new business, but it created a lot of new complexity and a, a decrease in uh, agility. And the external context, we are living now in a more faster changing world. So there is a need for the business to be able to reject and change faster. If we look at a little bit at the history of enterprise business architecture at Colrad, it started in the year 2011. Uh, we convinced Jeff of the importance of business architecture and he gave us the opportunity to create a language to talk about the Colrad group. Because that was an issue, because if you talk about concepts, for example, campaign management, inbound logistic management, the different business units didn't understand the same thing under that concept. So the first step we, we did was creating a language to talk to each other. And it was our first business component model, creating a language to talk about the same concepts. The next year we started a pilot on an operating model for the group. 
then we created really the internal structure of the cohort group and, uh, and the concept of operating units was uh, created. So it's really the internal structure how we would operate internally. And it's different from your legal structures. But we found then creating a full operating model for a cohort group at once was too ambitious. So then we go to the next fa phase in our evolution. Uh, the the Colorado group started different group programs, but they lack steering about what would be their future state, how they would be evolving towards in transition stages to other future states. So we, we went down to the tactical level and helped those uh, programs being successful. Uh, and at that moment, we start really creating value for the for the business. But there was still a problem. By starting then on tactical level, we saw that, for example, our CEO, Jeff, had to go really low to, to be able to steer strategically those initiatives. We lacked really the strategic level. So we went up again and we created then a, fr a strategic framework that is the, the strategy that is then validated for the next five years and we're steering all the transformations. And as enterprise a business architect and also IT architects, we are a part of that process today. So this is validated then with the, of the Colorado Group Architecture Board and with business stakeholders, and is steering down all the tactical initiatives. So Jeff don't have to go anymore in the tactical initiatives to steer his group. And then by doing all those change initiatives, we created piece by piece our our enterprise architecture landscape. So then in 2015-16, we consolidated all the insights we had by doing those group programs in the first version of our enterprise architecture landscape. At that moment in time, it was still an application function landscape on group level. Then to 2017, we created the, the, the version of the capability map for the Colorado Group that is still the map that we are using today and is still uh, growing. And we shifted then from an IT uh, point to a, a business point. But in fact, on group level, we don't have two functional models. No, the business functional model and the capability model is the same for business and IT. And it is this IT who challenges our business function uh, decomposition by challenging it. How is the IT mark looking at that decomposition? Because the consequence, if you take another uh, structure in your capability map, then the IT mark is looking at it. You will have or either you have to do a custom development or either you will have very expensive integrations. So then we, we work really together on one map. It's the Colorado Group Capability Map. If you also look how business architecture and IT architecture evolved in the Colorado Group, we see really the two different paces. First, at business architecture, we started really top down, as you saw in the previous presentation. And the first governance board that was created for uh, business architecture was the Colorado Group Architecture Board, where on strategic level we start steering the change uh, initiatives. On IT uh, sites, it was really more a bottom-up governance. They start creating a reference architecture and they did reviews of the change projects uh, by seeing how they did comply to that reference architecture. In fact, it was, I don't know the right uh, English term, it was uh, Stoppen met dwellen met de kraan open. Uh, and then now they are evolving towards also the more strategic level. On that moment in time, we had problems with alignment eh, because, and they start really with a technical review board and later on, uh, so we had alignment issues because our maturity in business architecture on planning level was not that high the IT architecture on planning level missed steering. And the same problem we had on strategic level, we missed steering from IT architecture. And today, uh, enterprise IT architects are really a part of the strategic process. And we are taking first good steps in business architecture on planning level. 
The next uh, topic that was important in our evolution is you don't do architecture alone. Architecture is really an element of change management. You have to do it together with, with your colleagues. Eh? So together we, uh, we, we look at the requirements of the business and we look then at target architectures. How is the way be to evolve to that target, taking into account dependencies, the change impact on people, the pace of benefit realization, the, the resources that are available, and we uh, combine this in a roadmap that is the, then the result of all those insights. So that is really important. It's not an architecture to create a beautiful state, it's architecture to create really business value, taking into account uh, limits to it that they are. So uh, we do training for, for business. Uh, and the first thing that we learn is the, the, the four basic concepts of our Colorad Group uh, business architecture. And in fact, it's, it's only four uh, models they, at first they have to learn. Our business is structured as operating units. It's the way internally how we are organized to create value. We create value through a, a value chain that delivers service propositions to our customers. Then to create that value, we use capabilities the, that is, they are available in our capability map. And when a capability is used by more than one operating unit, we have to have an, an, a steering uh, mechanism and it's, that is called a domain, who steers then the evolution uh, of that capability, who captures the requirements of all the operating units and then sees what is, will be the next version of the capability. So, uh, so we have two kinds of puzzles eh, in, in, in the past. Eh, we took as a, an image of architecture, it was a, a puzzle because we, we start off having concrete. It not, was not more anymore the spaghetti, but it was more concrete coupling. Now we look at architecture more as a Japanese tangram puzzle. In the classic puzzle, eh, you can only build, build one puzzle with the pieces eh, and you are really strongly con connected to each other. In the tangram puzzle, you can create multiple shapes with these pieces. They are reusable and they are not tightly connected. Now, creating tangram puzzle pieces is more complex than uh, classic puzzle pieces. So one uh, piece of the puzzle is called a capability. And in fact, we create it as a black box who inside has business functions and work processes information, the craftsmanship to execute that capability and the, applic the application and they the deliver services to uh, perform the end-to-end -end processes of a business. So we have our box, a puzzle box, the business capability landscape and the puzzle pieces are created to create value chains for the different operating units. So um, and then I take an example. We have a capability supply chain food with different business functions. That capability is used by different operating units at that moment in time, and we need a domain. It's also called supply chain food, who is then responsible for the design and the evolution of that capability. And you see here that the domain of supply chain food is responsible for the evolution of three capabilities who are linked to each other because they have also the, the same group of stakeholders supply chain food, logistic workforce, and sales forecasting. So it's really then a business government who steers the evolution of the capability. And that's also important is let business take ownership in the evolution of your architecture. It's not, we, we are supporting, but it's business who have to be in the lead of, of his architecture. And that's also the vision, vision of Colorado Group. When we look at uh, the layers of our business architecture, in past, we, I think most of you would know TOGAF. Eh? You have more the, the strategic uh, architecture. We see also as an architecture at group level at Colorado. You have segment architecture, but it's more at program or portfolio level. And yet then capability architecture is more about realizing capability increments. At Colorado, eh? the Colorado group architecture, as we call it, is really that strategic part. Then we have 
two flavors in our next level of architecture. It's the capability architecture, who is responsible for the elaboration of one capability. And then we have an operating unit architecture, who is responsible for creating value for the customer by using capabilities. And that's really two different uh, approaches to the same reality. And that's more the technical part. And then we create project viewpoints on that architecture. And on IT side, we go a little bit more deeper, and that's called then solution IT architecture, or you can call it a high, high level IT design. But we don't have three layers really in our architecture. If there is still work done in the, in the project, it's rolled up again in the tactical layer. So our permanent documentation contains only two layers follow that group architecture and the tactical architecture layer, not three layers. If we now look at the architecture role, roles in the Colorad group, eh, both uh, roles, each role is also a business and an IT flavor. We have the Colorad uh, group architect who is responsible for Colorad group architecture. We have uh, a capability architect, an operating unit architect, or a program architect who is then responsible for a major transformation. And then you have more project architects who create them project viewpoints or deepen the capability and operating unit architecture. When we look at the place of architecture and organization, uh, that starts in 2012. Uh, then we did the merger of my department was more about process improvement and IT, and a new department, business processes and systems, was created. So there we had a function architecture within enterprise business architecture, but the two flavors of IT architecture, enterprise and IT. And then there were also departments, consultancy and solutions, who deliver a solution to their customers, and were also more operating units organized. And the business architects were uh, in that part of the organization. The focus of IT architecture was the choice of centralization for faster increase in craftsmanship. And for business architecture, there was the choice for more custom in intimacy because they also helped the business in, for example, making up their project sheets. Okay. In 2019, enterprise business architecture is not anymore a part of uh, business process and system, but is a part of the corporate operating unit. So we report uh, directly to Jeff. Uh, enterprise IT architecture was then put directly under the CEO. And the, the IT architectures were also shifted to the service centers. The service centers are not anymore organized in function of the business units, but today also in function of capability development. So a service center of, of business process assessment is focused on capability development with within also the uh, business and IT architects in that uh, service center. When we look now at the future, eh? oh, here business in the lead, it was also important to say for and the shift it was also a demand of Chef to uh, pull enterprise business architectures out of BPNS because he didn't want that uh, IT was responsible for business architecture. It is business who is uh, responsible for the, the business architecture. So, in fact, I'm not at Colrad Group, the enterprise business architect. The chief enterprise business architect is Jeff Colrad, and his, his managers of, of his directory committee, direction board, are the architects of their business, and they need some strong staff people to help them. But we are, we do the run the process, we give advice, we take not the decisions. So on an architecture board, for example, we do not do the presentation. We ask the business to do the presentation about their architecture, and if needed, we give support. But that is also the the focus. So Jeff feels and sees that his business owns their architecture. Now looking at the, the future, uh, I think the, the step that we are taking now is the integration of change management. So the, the different functions, staff functions that are helping about change, like program management, portfolio management, change management, 
even application architecture are divided over the different operating units. Now we will all bring them together in the corporate operating unit to bring all the those, those functions together and to improve craftsmanship and align craftsmanship on those, those teams. So as a last slide, I will recap on some key success factors, some already mentioned. Uh, the importance of CO and management buy-in is, is not new, uh, but you can do it also to be, a, to be sure that the ownership of your business architecture is taken by business. So you give them really an important role in your governance working. For example, eh, at Colgate Group for the evolution of capability, we have the domains. So the responsible of a domain is a domain responsible who is someone from business and who he is also the, the, the chairman of the governance board of that domain. So you have also to have a clear ABR governance because otherwise uh, your goal is not realized. Uh, so we have two levels at uh, the, the Colorado Group Architecture Board, which goes about the strategy level for the whole group. And then you have the domain board will go more about the deepening of the, the capability itself. And then to to be to not ever again to, uh, to have to ask from uh, would you do architecture at Colorado Group is uh, the TOM exercise is a part of the st standard strategic process. So automatically we are asked to do that kind of work and they can't uh, finalize their strategic process without presenting the architecture part of it to the direction board. So to start, eh, it's important to help business to solve their prob problems, even if it's not always enterprise architecture, create value for them. Eh? And by cre creating the, the buy-in, you can go upwards in the value chain. But if you want to be business take ownership of the architecture, you have to train the business in architecture and because business takes most of the time also roles in, for example, the responsibility of a project. But if they do not feel and, 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 and the importance of architecture, it will not work. And then use deliverables uh, that were used by business and today in each management board, uh, there are architecture deliverables on their wall. When from each, when each time we do an update of our capability landscape, we have a distribution list where business can subscribe to have the new version of the poster of our landscape. They are used in the business and they are used in me meetings to discuss. So it becomes also a part of standard discussion. Also, what we learn is do not do architecture on your own, integrate with other change disciplines, but together you create a successful change. And then also the important to create the separation of the strategic vision and the tactical architectures, uh, like Bart uh, mentioned, yeah, because strategic architecture is needed to steer towards a vision, but it's sometimes five, seven years ahead. And it gives not a lot of steering to the, the, the change initiatives. They have to have a concrete transition architecture that they have to deliver. If you leave that to the project, you create chaos. Two levels is enough. You don't need a, a third level. Sometimes in project you have still to deepen, but then you have to roll it again up to your tactical level. So that was a little bit my intro introduction in how we are organized uh, to do uh, architecture at Colored Group. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm available for answering questions. Okay. Um, before we go to the, uh, the Q&A, we, we still have a couple of minutes and uh, run over the, the polls. Um, one more um, breakfast um, um, uh, lottery uh, by, uh, by Igor uh, before concluding uh, this session to, uh, this morning. So Igor, if you can take over the screen uh, to, uh, to pull the wheel.
So, Mr. Yostofiris, you're the lucky one. You thank you very, the breakfast. Thank you very much, uh, indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Bart, up to you for the Q and A. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you very much, Mike, for this uh, really inspiring uh, uh, session, and I, uh, we, we we learn a lot. On, uh, on on how Colred and I think it's it's one of the companies in in, in Belgium that is really doing that um, um, for a long time even uh, business architecture and it was really inspiring I, I must say so many many thanks to you Mark you also have a presence I got some insights from some colleagues of you of what that could be so um, I will make sure that it will um, will uh, come to to you thank you. So before going to Q&A, uh, I'd like to uh, go over the, the responses of the polls. Uh, the first poll uh, indeed was about uh, do we think that uh, business architecture is or how, how, is it important for your organization? And 85% uh, said yes, um, and and that's uh, that's that's that shows also the uh, the attendance this morning. Um, there's a really a lot of uh, interest in in business architecture today, and indeed in in, in most companies uh, they are really uh, working with it. So. Um, also interesting, only 5% says no, no uh, but it's it's really a, a, a large majority um, that answered positive on that question. Second question was about the positioning of business architecture. So where is are the business architects located in the in the organization? Also there now in the in the participants, uh, 15 per participants answered that question. 70% um, says it's, it, it's, it's, it's in the IT organization and 30% is in the business organization. So as a personal comment, um, it's it's really important for a business architect. We all know that the proximity with the business that's a, that's the key uh, the, the key thing for a, for a, for a business architect. Um, and of course, if the relation is good, uh, we can work from within IT. But there it, there's more benefits and more it's beneficial even if a business architect is really um, closer to, to, to business. Um, and we see that evolve in, in fact in many companies who are trying to do business architecture from an IT uh, point of view. But as indeed, as I said, maturity is grow maturity is a wrong word, eh? but the, the the pace of change of business is growing. We see indeed the need increase to have that uh, capability built inside the business organization more and more. And then last question is about um, strategy and um, the, is a business architecture part of the strategy formulation process in the organization? As I said, it's a key capability to uh, make clear the impact of the strategy. So it's always a good thing to have that in um, uh, when you formulate a new strategy in, a, in an organization. And there it is, uh, the majority, in fact, no is the answer, and yes, only at uh, 25%. So I think there's still some work to do on, 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 on that level. So that were the poll questions, uh, I believe. And uh, I'm looking at uh, Q&A um, in uh, the chat. There was one question of uh, Veselin, I think, uh, I saw. In, in, in the uh, the chat and his question was, how do you get a feedback? What capabilities are needed and what qualities they need to have? Um, can you take this one, Mark? Or I take this, it's, it's the same, but it's I think it's an interesting question. That's, it's uh, even not a simple question to, to answer. So I was, was, was thinking about it. Uh, okay. But, but first, I, I think, how do we uh, approach it? Uh, you can uh, approach the, the, the thing in two ways. First, you start from an first approach is from starting from an operating unit point of view, and you look really what the, that operating unit needs to create value for its customers. And then you can look at uh, do you already have capable and you have requirements and for that that uh, service proposition to your customers and then you see do we already have capabilities in the landscape that can give an answer to that in to that uh, need or do we have to create new capabilities if we have already capabilities that could give an answer then we could see we could see if that capability can evolve to also give an answer to to that uh, 
to that requirement or do we have to, to, to go for diversification for that capability? Eh? Because if it's only a variation on a lower level, you, you enhance your capability with new functions. Eh? I'll give an example. For example, now we are implementing the supply chain with uh, SPAR, but the need at also other needs than Colorad, but because, for example, they do cross docking, what Colorad does not do. So now we say, okay, it's a good evolution of that capability, so we will enhance that capability to, to also now serve that kind of requirement. So now the capability becomes a, a lot stronger and can also be used by SPAR. But a certain moment in time, if Colorad wants to use then also cross docking, it's available in its capability. The second approach that we do as an enterprise business architect is, for example, now an exercise that is going on. Jeff asked us to look at how we will organize and what operating model choices we'll make about purchase in the group. So that's an all totally other approach. You start from a team and you look then, for example, is the purchase operate the purchase process uh, the same for the month food business or the food business. And then we see as an architect, for example, that most about sourcing, negotiation and agreement management, there is no difference on group level between food and non-food business. But when you go to the purchase operations team, it's more integrated with your supply chain and then the person operations is diversified that number of times you have different supply chains. That's another approach. You start from a study that goes about the, the, the boat group and the boat approaches are valid. Is it an answer at your question? Uh, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, so generally my question was uh, there are many approaches to, to it. Um, I just wanted to understand um, in uh, the broader scope uh, in a large organization, how do you uh, get a feedback? Uh, is there a feedback mechanism, like you said, from the operating units um, to to know what what is needed and what qualities it might have? It might have. Uh, so the demand. How do you measure the demand? <coughs> I don't really capture the, the, the question because you create your architecture together with the business and we discuss with them truly the alternatives and in the end they take the decision and we get always directly feedback. It will work, it will not work. Uh, and then we start realizing that capability, but the governance of the evolution is also done together with, with business because we have the domain boards, the, 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 the strategic boards, where the business is also the, the, a part of it. So it's not separated from business. It's really done together with business. Yeah, uh, what I meant is generally the examples, if I take with the puzzles, you have either the approach of having a landscape of uh, capabilities and then each uh, unit can uh, combine them for their own uh, process and purpose or you can uh, make them uh, where, where you don't have really control on the qualities of these capabilities. You just consume them as they are because a capability, one capability can be in one domain, another capability in another domain. You have really little control on the qualities or you can start by the added value by the, and you can say in order to reach that value, I need uh, these and these capabilities with these qualities. Yeah. So th thank you, Vesely, for the question. We will we we'll take this uh, in um, uh, offline uh, with, with with Mark because there's only time for one more uh, question, and then we will uh, conclude the session because we have to round up at uh, at nine thirty sharp. So I gr will group some other questions. Uh, um, fast one, Mark. It's 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 how to um, um, the the interaction between the IT. The archite enterprise architects and the business enterprise architects that call it uh, happen, and do they need the same uh, ca uh, capabilities or competences uh, being uh, an enterprise architect? So um, that uh, groups uh, a lot of those questions. Okay. I, I will answer the question only on strategic level. So, uh, as seen, we have not anymore 
two models on uh, enterprise level. We have only one model that is shared between enterprise, business, and IT architecture. And when I say IT architecture, I mean application IT architecture. Because mm -hmm. for us, application architecture is also a part of the business and not on IT. It's technology architecture, more on the other layers of the reference model of IT, uh, platforms, uh, infrastructure, is, that is the responsible of IT. And that's not, you have to, to be provisioning the necessary things for, for the applications. But how we look at, at the processes, first business builds uh, uh, their functional landscape, what, how they are looking at their landscape and what is their, their dream. And then an IT architect goes looking at the market, how, how mar is the market organized about those functionalities. And then we bring those two insights together to see does it does it fit or not fit, and then we we, we discuss about the consequences, and sometimes mm -hmm. we say okay, yeah, we will take the separation like we want to do, and not like the market does it, and okay. sometimes we steer our, our capability, say okay, I think we can live with how the mark, market look at it, and it's really a shared uh, process, and they use the concept of base layering, is it a unique? A function or a more common function to mm. what is the time investment horizon to do this that work okay so thank you all for your questions uh, we don't have time anymore to to answer them online but we'll collect them and come back with the answers uh, um, um, in, in, a, in a written uh, fashion so um, thank you all for uh, attending i would like to give the final word to uh, to ludo Okay, thanks Bart. Thanks Bart and uh, Mark for the, the great cooperation, also in the preparation and, and running this session. Uh, just to wrap up, first of all, thanks for being in the call. Uh, um, a big, quite a, a number of people. Um, good questions as well and good interaction. We will share over the next week uh, via an email the link to the presentations and also the recorded uh, session. Um, as said earlier, um, uh, for the winners, please send me your uh, details so we can deliver it um, uh, to your home tomorrow. And the next breakfast session will take place after the holiday on September the 11th. And the topic will be enterprise architecture in an agile context. So stay safe, um, have a good weekend and uh, uh, talk to you soon um, or at least on September 11th, I hope. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Bye.